We can hear you loud and clear. Good, good. Okay. Uh, I owe you one. <laughs> I owe you the last part of Surangama Sutra. So today, by the way, I try to uh, explain or read it to you, okay? Yes. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. That will be wonderful. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who has take time to record what the Buddha is teaching after the masters and nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who has really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Last time, we read until uh, the one that, the demon that originally came from the essence that was created during an eclipse of the sun and the moon. Okay, that was, uh, we have done with that. And now the next one, and it is the last one. Mm. The last one is that, okay? Further, in the unhindered clarity and wonder, that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone. This good person is untroubled by any deviant mental state and experiences perfect, bright concentration. Within samadhi, his mind craves long life, so he toils at investigating its subtleties as he greedily seeks for immortality. He wishes to cast aside the birth and death of the body, and suddenly he hopes to end the birth and death of thought as well, so that he can abide forever in a subtle form. At that time, a demon from the heaven sees the opportunity it has been waiting for, his spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to expound the sutras and teachings. This person, unaware that he is possessed by a demon, claims he has reached unsurpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks long life, immortality, yeah? he arranges a seat and explains the teaching. He is fond of saying that he can go to places and come back without hindrance, perhaps traveling 10,000 miles and returning in the twinkling of an eye. He can also bring things back from wherever he goes. Well, I have uh, heard that somebody still can do that nowadays. Or he may tell someone who walked from one end of the room to the other a distance of just a few paces. Then, even if the person walked past for years, he could not reach the other end. 
Therefore, people believe in the possessed person and mistaken him for a Buddha. He also often says, you know, this possessed person. Yeah. All beings in the ten directions are my children, and I gave birth to all Buddhas. Oh, God. <laughs> I created the world. I am the original Buddha. I created this world naturally, not due to cultivation. This may be a chamunda sent from the retinue of the demons in the heaven of sovereignty. Or a useful tisatya from the heaven of the four kings that have not yet brought forth the resolve. It takes advantage of the person's luminous clarity and devours his essence and energy. Or perhaps without having to rely on a teacher, the cultivator personally sees a being that tells him, I am a Vajra spirit who has come to give you long life. Or the being transforms itself into a beautiful woman and engages him in a frenzied lust, so that within a year his vitality is exhausted. Oh, dear God. He talks to himself, and to anyone listening, he sounds like a goblin. The people around him do not realize that what's happening. In most cases, such a person will get in trouble with the law. But before he is punished, he will die from depletion anyway. The demon disturbs and confuses the person to the point of death. The Buddha continues, mm. You should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall into the relentless hell. Ananda, you should know that in the Dharma and in age, these ten kinds of demons may leave the home life to cultivate the way within the Dharma. They may possess other people or they may manifest themselves in various forms. All of them will claim that they have already accomplished proper and pervasive knowledge and awareness. But they praise lust and break the Buddha's moral precepts. The evil demonic teachers and their demonic disciples that I just discussed transmit their teaching through licentious activities. Such deviant spirits take over cultivators' minds, and after a few as nine lives or as many as a hundred generations, they turn true practitioners entirely into followers of demons. Oh, my God. Oh, dear God. When their lives are over, they are bound to end up as one of the demonic cords. They will lose their proper and pervasive knowledge and fall into the relentless hell. You need not enter nirvana yet, Ananda, although you are completing your attainment to the level beyond learning. Hold, nonetheless, to your vows to enter the, the Dharma ending age meaning he should reincarnate again in the Dharma and in age, and bring forth great compassion to rescue and take across living beings who have proper minds and deep faith. Do not let them become possessed by demons. Help them instead to attain proper knowledge and views. I have already rescued you from birth and death by venerating the Buddha's world you will be repaying the Buddha's kindness. Ananda, all ten of these states may occur in dhyana, I mean when you sit in meditation, uh, when you practice meditation. Dhyana means meditating. These ten states may occur in dhyana as one's mental effort interacts with the thinking skanda. Dull and confused living beings do not evaluate themselves 
encountering such situations, in their confusion, they fail to recognize them and say that they have become sages, thereby uttering a great lie. They will fall into the relentless hell. In the Dharma ending age, after my nirvana, all of you should pass on the Tathagata's teaching so that all living beings can awaken to their meaning. Do not let the demons of the heavens ha- have their way. Offer protection so that all can realize the unsurpassed way. There are some also other wrong views that Buddha has tried to explain to Ananda. But nevertheless, we end as a tenth possessive state uh, by demons. You can see this. Even the the cultivator just want to be immortal, you know, live forever. Still, there is demons who who, who specialize in this kind of uh, you know fulfillment for this person. Actually, it's not a fulfillment. Meaning, he can come and possess one person and demonstrate this kind of miracle. Power, so that people believe, and the cultivator believed that he could also attain immortality. But this is not true. Anyway, what for we want to live long in this world? We'll have no more teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it can grow some more, but it's not the same. Hmm. Uh, this person would like to even live Maybe not in a physical form, but in a subtle form, maybe an astral form. And even then, even then, it's not just making mistakes by uh, I want him to be immortal, but he could be deluded into believing into the de- demon's uh, promise. And then later even became a demon himself. So it is very risky to try you know, to get it a quicker way or desire in such a not very uh, proper thinking of a desired kind of state. We should not always thinking or wanting this and that. We just want to be liberated and maybe maximum want to become Buddha so that we can liberate others. But do not seek for this kind of miraculous happenings or miracles like live forever, live long, or do all kind of these spectacular show off. Then we will not have to reduce ourselves into a demonic state. Is that all clear? Clear, Master. Mm. You can see that. So the Buddha has asked Ananda and some of the saints in the assembly not to hurry and go to Nirvana, but to stay a while. After, so that after Buddha's Nirvana, they can help all sentient beings to ward, ward themselves against the possessiveness of the demon. Sometimes I want to scream out loud. Okay. All of you should just recite the holy name, meditate as much as you can at home and elsewhere, and just want liberation from all the created world. I mean the the shadow created world, the shadow world. That would be the best wish. Nothing else you should wish. Sometimes I want to scream out loud and come to each of your house and scream and say, please wake up. Do not be attached to anything in this world, however beautiful, however alluring, however promising. They are the chain that binds you forever in the cycle of transmigration. Look inside. Just look inside. Inside is the real world. Everything outside here that you can see or you want to look or you want to hold on to are not real. Not real at all. And the more we are attracted 
to outside, the more we cannot be in the real world. 